So welcome everybody. Welcome to um, Hot Song Podcast. Today is May 9th, 2024. And the, the um, topic for this evening is emotional mastery. I was, um, well, a couple of things. I, I actually recently on the weekend, um, I, I, I was listening, I was uh, attending um, one of Sea Earth Star's masterclass on psychic, um, what, psychic? Um, so how, how to protect ourselves against psychic attacks. And, and she, I thought she was going to do some, you know, like really um, elaborate things, but actually she kept it very basic, which I love. And, you know, what she said was that, you know, when you are stable yourself, when you are stable, when you know who you are and you are, and you accept who you are and you um, are a really grounded person, grounded in yourself, then, you know, psychic attack, it's not easy to psychically attack someone who is very grounded. It's only when you're not grounded that it's easy to psychically attack, to, to get attacked, because when you're not grounded, then um, you don't feel safe in your body. So any kind of, like, it's, it's so much easier to, to get um, knocked down when you are not grounded and i'm not going to talk about you know how to how to protect yourself from psychic attack this evening because it's yeah we are psychically attacked all the time i consider every time um the uh, every every advertisement everybody every time if somebody tries to um you know convince you uh of their reality, I, I consider those, you know, a, a form of psychic attack as well, because it is about um, really trying to move your, move you away from um, where you are to, to control what, to, what you think. So, for me, that really is is what psychic attack is, is really somebody else trying to control you. And when you know who you are and when you're grounded in who you are, then you it's not easy to um, control you. It's, it's, and, and yes, that does not mean that you will never change your mind. However, when you change your mind, it's because you have considered everything and 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 you decided to incorporate someone else's um, point of view into yours that's so it's about being more open so that's why i find that you know being grounded in who we are is so important and one of the ways to make sure that we are grounded in ourselves is really to become more the master of our own emotions because usually it's our emotions that trip us up. It's when we all of a sudden get overwhelmed by certain emotions that we haven't quite dealt with. That's when we, um, that's when we kind of leave ourselves open to being easily controlled and take over by somebody else who has, for, for whatever reason, has a much stronger um, motive to, to persuade us otherwise. So that's why I want to talk about emotional mastery this evening. And, um, and also emotions... We have been living in a you know a false matrix. Um, so who we are has been completely, I would say, 
uh, fact for such a long time that it is, and, and the emotions is one of it. So that's why it's, it's, it's really getting back to um, being the master of our own emotions is one of the most important ways that we can do in order to reclaim our own sovereignty. Sovereignty meaning that you are in control of your own emotions and how you process information coming in and being able to make up your own mind without um, being hijacked unnecessarily. So that is what emotional mastery is about. So let me just pull up my notes. So that's why the uh, the graphics for this evening is really a lock, the, the lock, because emotions, um, a lot of us, we, we need, we have emotions. We are emotional beings. Human beings are emotional beings. Um, and even if you don't think you are emotional, it's just because you're not connected to it. But it's it is there. It's in the background. And when it's in the background, it's actually even more um that makes it makes us more vulnerable. Because when we are not connected with our emotions. It actually makes it harder for us to be the mass, be the master of our own emotions. Because how can we master something that we're not even um, consciously aware of? So, being consciously aware of what's underneath and what's actually bubbling underneath um, all the, the the conscious mind, uh, the facade that we usually try to compose to, to, to it's like the, the face that we show to, to other people. Um, it's, we hide a lot of things beneath that. And if we have been hiding for such a long time that we sometimes forget that it was there in the first place. So, um, First thing I want to just reaffirm because it's 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 very important. I, I believe it's very important. And okay, let me just get my um let me just get my notes to be the right way so I can come to it. Okay. Okay, so first thing is um, is really to reiterate that we are eternal essence experiencing this reality through our body. And um, I just want all of you to kind of repeat that, that to yourself because most of the time we think oh I'm this human being what can I do and that has been really um, framed into us found into us for such a long time that it's it's not easy for us to remember that we are we're not a human being. We have a human body, but we are not this body. That we are actually much bigger and much more, and we are eternal and limitless. However, do we use this body to, re to experience this reality? And it's purely for the experience that we come here in this reality, purely for experience so that we can learn, so that we can just be able to feel um, something that a pure spirit, a, 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 an eternal essence cannot feel. And that's why we are here. 
so um, I think really grasping that that's who we truly are. We are not we're not human beings. We've been living as a uh, as this body and everything is real. Everything that we can touch is real. And if we can't see it, we can't touch it, it's not real. And that's something that has been very, very deliberately trained, taught, and reinforced to each and every one of us. And the purpose of that, that is, um, the purpose of that is twofold. One thing um, is, you know, we accepted that. We accepted that limitation to um, be able to experience this reality through our body. We willingly accepted that because otherwise we won't be able to um, feel what it feels like to have a body. Then we won't be able to experience a lot of the other things that only a limited being can experience. So, and the other thing is um, that there are, it, it's also part of it is that um, there are also people who already know that they are much more than this human body. And in order, and they want to control us. And in order to control us is to not let us know and to do everything in their power to um, make sure that we don't get that information. So it's part of it is we accepted that at some point in our lives. Part of it is that we, um, uh, there are so many things that are being controlled, our environment is being controlled so that we don't even get an inkling that that may be the truth. And even if we hear somebody telling us that, um, we would, you know, think of them as, oh, silly. What are they thinking? What are they talking about? They, they're crazy. They don't know what they're talking about because we've been conditioned for so many um, lifetimes that, you know, if you cannot see it, you cannot touch it, it's not real. And that's simply not true. And so I noticed, like, I remember that the, um, on my own journey, of uh, um, remembering who I truly am, one of the things that really helped me along is that I continually remind myself, even when I doubted myself, even when I doubted what I am um, seeing, what I'm seeing and, and what I'm feeling, like throughout all that, I continually reminded myself that I am eternal essence embodied, an eternal essence experiencing this reality through this body and that I am so much more than this body. It's this constantly reminding myself that really helped me um, to be able to start to get out of that because if you believe something, then you will only notice the things that will um, confirm your beliefs. So for those of you who want to start to get back to being limitless, to break out of the boxes that we've been in for a long time, then really take on that practice to continually remind yourself. You can you can you can write it out on a piece of paper and stick it everywhere so that you can remind yourself, you can put it in your cell phone, however you want to do it, that's up to you. However, um the most important thing is to continually remind yourself. You are eternal essence. 
experiencing this reality through a body. Okay, so far so good. All right. And um, the next thing is, okay, so we, the body is what lets us experience this reality through our senses. And I, I think I've mentioned to you that our senses are, I'm talking about our five senses, that we have more than the five senses, but I, but, you know, as a, person who only um, who believe that we are human beings only then your five senses are, are your primary senses so our senses are actually very limited if you look at you know what your eyes can see our eyes can only register a very you know, <clears throat> out of um, a very wide range of um, color, of frequency. We, our eyes can only see a very small portion of the, the, the visible, like the visible um, light is only a very small portion of the whole range of things that can be seen. So our, our not not only do we just have five senses to work with when we believe that we are just this human being, or our five senses are actually very limited. So we can see only a very like a fraction of um, what can be detected. And our ears can only hear the same thing, only a very small section of all the sounds for example um you know dogs animals other animals have a, a much wider wider range of hearing that's why the um there are whistles that you can blow which when you blow it like dog whistles when you blow it you cannot hear it because it is outside the the, the range of what your ears can pick up However, a dog can hear it because their ears are able to pick up a much wider range. So that's part of the, the uh, like how our senses actually restrict what we have access to. And um, what else? Um, we There are only certain things that we can smell. It's... And so our, our smelling, a sense of smell only is like, there's only a range of smells that we can pick up or a, a certain density. When something is so faint, we cannot even smell it. Like, it's only when the, um, like the molecules of the smell is, is much denser that we can actually pick it up. So there are even with how we are able to smell and taste and be able to feel. So all of those, all of our five senses, we only have access to a very small range of what is there for us to see, hear, feel, smell, taste. It's actually much more there. And so, so our senses are very limited. And so I'm talking about this human experience that we are. So, you know, so being a human, when we try to be a human, then we actually limit ourselves. We cut ourselves off to the range of possibilities for ourselves. So that's why it's very important to start to Remind yourself, condition yourself that you are so much more than this. Because when you start mm -hmm. to truly remember and truly um, get the idea that you are way more than who you think you are in this moment, then you start to, um, you know, crack open the 
range of possibilities for yourself. Because when you only believe that you're a human being, then there's no way out of this box. But when you are ready to, and like when you start to acknowledge that you are so much more, just that in this moment, you can only you know sense this much. But when you are open to sense more, that's when you start to build that muscle, that um, ability, and allow yourself to have access to a bit more than um, what you have access to in this moment. So the first thing is you have to start to shift who you think you are, because if if you um, are not flexible, if you think, okay, I am a human being, I am a human being. When you um, limit yourself to this, then you are only limiting yourself to what is normal, quote unquote normal for human beings. So let go of the thought that you are a human being and really remember that you are eternal essence experiencing this world through a body. And um, so we experience this world through the body and then emotions, we have emotions to help us accentuate our experiences. And whatever it is that we experience, um, our mind makes a story, creates a story to kind of make sense of what we are experiencing. It's, it's something that is so natural. It's, it's like, oh, he looked at me this way. Oh, he must not like me. <laughs> it may be true. It may not be true. It's just that our mind likes to make up the story. And when we make up the story and we continue and, and always um, you know, fall back on that same story, then that story will start to, we start to believe the stories that our mind makes up. And um, so the stories that you over and over again tell yourself, you know, internally tell yourself, reinforce yourself, at some point will become a belief. So at some point, you don't even need to weave that story anymore. It's, it's so automatic. This look, he doesn't like me or whatever the story may be. So, you know, at some point, you don't even need to make up a story. It's so automatic. It becomes your beliefs. So that's how beliefs comes about, is that, you know, first time we have this experience, we feel the emotions, the experience being accentuated by our emotions. We don't know how to deal with it. So our mind just create a story. And um, the thing about story is, um, once the, the story is there, it's so much easier to go back to the same story rather than trying to create a new story every time we have the experience. So at some point, the beliefs become solid because we have so many other different experiences that reinforced that story and the story becomes a belief. And so how do we get rid of the beliefs? We we have to do a pattern break. We have to drop the stories. And um, and how do we drop the stories? Uh, the first thing is to just start to notice when or how we see the world through our stories so that like, so it's, it's kind of we reverse, we have to reverse that process. It's, it used to be that we have 
experiences, we feel something with the emotions, and then we make up the stories. And if, when we make up the stories, often enough it becomes a belief. So when we try to um, shift our beliefs, we have to stop reinforcing the stories. When something happens, we have a certain experience and the story comes up, you have to notice, oh, it's that story again. And um, just remind yourself, it's a story. It's a one story out of many other possible scenarios. So, and um, when you do that often enough, then you're able to shift that belief because the belief when it is no longer reinforced then it becomes softer and easier to shift and um, one of the ways to do that is to the easy, one of the ways to do that is to process the emotions because remember emotions are there to accentuate the experiences. So when you start to process the emotions that we feel about you know, certain things happening, then um, it's much easier to get into neutral. When we get into neutral, it's much easier to let go of the, um, the stories and shift the beliefs. So, Questions, comments so far? So it is basically when we have the story and then we keep repeating and repeating. So it's really engraved in our memory. And that's why we put the label on it. Oh, this person look at me this way. That means he's mad or happy or hate me or like me, right? So it's auto mode we, we create, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So like when, when we repeat the same story, mm -hmm. when we feel a certain way, when we keep um, reinforcing that story, then yeah, then it becomes a pattern or a limiting belief. So we don't even go to the stories. We don't even bother coming up with a new story anymore. We just, let's just straight go to there. It's like switch. We yeah. turn the switch on. Okay. It's Thank a you. switch. Uh -huh. Wow. Okay. That's why I don't, I don't recognize because it's just so, I'm so trained. So it goes back and forth to it things and I don't, yes. Okay. It becomes unconscious, so you don't even question it anymore. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You are welcome. Really, I don't know if you remember uh, a few years back, I told you about this uh, prayer that uh, Sadhguru had made. I'm not the body, I'm not the mind. Remember the third line. You, at that point, you said, how can you not be the body or the mind? See how much we have developed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so far. And he yep. was telling us that many years back and we didn't understand it. Yep. Yeah, it's... um. When you believe that you are a human being and then... It, like it's you like and you think that you know this this is my body I am this body and when you have that and we have we've been trained to um, believe that so we don't even question it anymore we've been trained for such a long time for generations not just you know not just this lifetime different lifetimes it's been 
over and over reinforce. So it actually becomes so automatic, we do not even question that we human, are we? So even that phrase, I'm only human, what you want from me, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, you know, pay attention to the language because, you know, when we use that kind of language, we actually cut off a lot of our own, you know, possibilities and potentials. We are so much more, we're limitless. It's just that, you know, right now, we want to limit ourselves just a little bit more. And um, it is always possible for us to shift. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Sounds good. But no, I, I got it. Like, I know that's because I talked to you earlier because I don't feel it. Maybe the the memory, the my action, it, everything is so fast. I don't even recognize it. Go zoom with that story, this story, that story. So I'm always busy without even acknowledging any thought. So auto mode. Yeah. <laughs> a touch a touch button. It's just not even dial button, it's touch button. <laughs> yep. So now we have to um do a pattern interrupt. We have to interrupt ourselves. So I really um I encourage all of you should you want to shift that and not I mean there's nothing wrong with being human being. I'm not saying that human being is less than. However, you know, it's it's up to you. If you like being a human being, if you then keep going. However, if you want to recover more of who you are beyond this body, beyond this reality, then the, one of the ways to do is to Remind yourself, have a mantra, a mantra that you um, would be able to say to yourself often enough to, to start to be able to sink it in. Is that, you know, I am eternal essence experiencing this world through a body or some other variation of that to really understand that you are so much more than who you think you are at this moment. And when you continually remind yourself, that is a pattern break. You will start to see the shifts. The question. Are the emotions stored in the body? Yep. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. And same with mental. I guess thoughts are stored in our mental body and emotions are stored in our emotional body. Well, um, as, I'm, as I've already mentioned, that we experience the, this reality through our body. It may not be, like it may be stored. Our emotional body is about two, three inches, you know, away from our physical body. However, the way we access that is still through the body. Because your body is how you feel those emotions. <laughs> right. Because without the without your physical body, you won't be able to access mm. those emotions. Mm -hmm. Like it, it may still be there, but 
you won't be able to experience it without a body. So that means our soul does not carry the emotions. If the soul is in, because of the body, we are experiencing all these emotions, the, then when we leave the body here and we go to the next uh, uh, playground or whatever, wherever we go, I don't know, but they, then do we leave that emotions behind then why we are caring from past life earth is a little oh, okay i shouldn't say earth is the only one but um ex emotions are experienced very differently depending on which playground you're on on mm -hmm. earth the emotions um like you may have emotions from you know other your other experience. The way you experience it on Earth though would be different from how you would experience it when you're in a different background. So um, when you come when you're on Earth, when you come back to Earth, you mm -hmm. will have access to the emotional experiences or and all the other experience that you have had on earth you have access to those oh, okay and when you are um in a different let, let's say let's say you're on mars you may not have the, the experience that you have had on earth in the way that you would experience it on earth you may still be able to have access to it, but um, your emotional body and your physical body would give you a very different experience than when you are here. The emotions, the way we experience emotions on Earth is to the... the um, the goal is to accentuate that. So mm -hmm. we feel it more. There are playgrounds that um, do not allow, the, they just don't have the programs for us or don't have the, 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 um, the background to experience the rich range of emotions as you could on earth so because of due to the attachment and it's a different play playground is it uh, like the attachment with the families and greed and everything else yeah. illusion yeah. we we attach into illusion and we think it's a reality yep all of oh. that yes oh. But that does not mean that mm, there's nothing we can do. We are we're not hostage to that. Is when we are unaware, then that's what happens. But when you are aware and you're conscious that you are more than this, then you can start to process those emotions so that um, your experience of them start to shift and they won't be as overwhelming as before mm -hmm. thank you okay okay so now um so how do we process our emotions i know i talked about you know, how to i always mention process your emotions but and I think I've talked about how to process emotions. However, I want to um, really get to more. Give give you give you all you know. Uh, I'm ready. More of a process to process your emotions, or so more strategy to process your emotions. Okay. So sure. Whenever you you can do this when you are triggered. 
or you can um, just do this with a <clears throat> with a goal. For example, um, you can say, okay, I want to process my emotions around my finance, for example, or I want to process my emotions around my uh, career. So, so that's what I mean by you, you know, you, you process according to a goal, or you can process your emotions when you're in the midst of it, when you're triggered, when you feel whatever emotions and you're like, in the depth of that emotions, then that's actually very good uh, way, a very good time to start to process that. So first thing is, is to like, whether you are um, in the midst of it being triggered to be in an emotion, or whether you want to, you know, you have a goal, you want to process emotions around, let's say, career, then what you do is um, really stop moving. So have a, be in a space where you can just um, have some peace and quiet on your own. So stop moving, stop talking, and stop thinking. Not easy. <laughs> For some people, it may not be easy. But yeah. Like talking is for a lot of people a way of um, distracting ourselves from processing our emotions, which is talk, 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 talk. So, and um, so stop talking, stop moving, stop thinking, just be in a quiet space. Just pay attention to what's going on in your body in the body. So just disconnect from doing anything else. Just tune in with the body. Notice whatever it is that's going on in your body. If there's any pain at any other sensations, just pay attention to it without trying to judge whatever comes up. <clears throat> and um, adjust your breathing. So allow, take time to breathe slowly. Sometimes when we are triggered, we, it may be, we may not um, be breathing slowly. We may not, we may feel, you know, somehow we couldn't even move, uh, couldn't even breathe because it's, it's kind, of, it's kind of very intense and overwhelming. So take time to breathe slowly and just use your breath to allow you to slow everything down as though you're trying to slow down time so that you can actually tune in to the body because your body is where you actually experience all of that energy that's flowing through you as an emotion. So just pay attention to your body. Notice your body, how it feels, where it feels what, and um, just be with your body. And if you have thoughts coming in, if you have stories coming in, to try to say, well, this happened, so it means, so, don't try to um, jump to the stories. Don't try to jump to any conclusion. Just if the thoughts come, if the stories come, just observe those things. Observe whatever it is that is coming up in your mind and in your body without needing to add anything to it or without needing to analyze anything. So just basically allow your body to simply feel. So it's a very, it seems like a very 
passive process. However, that is actually um, the best way to process your emotions. Usually it is our thinking that stops. Um, that kind of interferes with how the body can process emotions. Because emotions is actually energy that's flowing through our body. Like certain kinds of um, emotions and um, energy is flowing through our body. And it's creating sensation in our body. And the more we try to, you know, come up with the stories or, or um, trying to analyze it, um, the, it's not helping at all. So just allow your body, just observe your body, allow your body to do what it's designed to do. Because the body is designed to process energy. And emotion is simply a form of energy. It's intense energy sometimes. No matter how intense it is, your body knows, innately knows how to process it. All you have to do is give it time, stop moving, stop trying to come up with new stories or new thinking or new analysis, how to explain, because all of these analyzing is just us, our mind trying to control the process. Our mind trying to, to control a process that the body has an innate ability to do. So, um, so just allow your body to do its work to process the emotions, okay? So that's really a big step. Um, any questions there first? I, I think I can be quiet. I can uh, start the breathing. Only my issue is I can't stop thinking. You don't need to stop thinking. Just stop. Um, <clears throat> just stop. What is the... So stop um, paying attention to what you're thinking. So just observe the thoughts. You, you would... The mind thinks it's it's what the mind does. So it's okay to not be able to stop thinking. And that's fine. Just observe your thoughts and don't try to reinforce it. Don't try to say, oh, yeah, that makes sense. This must be it. So no, don't engage your thoughts. Just observe it. Can you do that? I think I, I do fight, I say. If the thought comes, I say, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. But still, I still connect with it, like back and forth, I think. Okay. Well, you don't have to resist it. Just observe okay. it without, you know, um, chasing after it. Just observe <laughs> If okay. you have thought, that's fine. <laughs> okay. It's <laughs> very easy to say. I know that. <laughs> It's kind of it's kind of like observing traffic. You know, you cannot stop traffic. But right. just observe it. Does thoughts come? That's that's what the mind does. The mind has thoughts. So the thoughts will come and you may not be able to stop the thoughts. That's fine. Just observe it. It comes in, let it let it just go. Without trying to um hang on to it or resist it or try to think them up, make it make sense. Don't engage, observe it, that's all. What stops your body from processing? It's really your mind. 
So just allow your body to do its work without needing to make it make sense. Can I speak? <laughs> yep, absolutely. Go ahead. Uh, you've been teaching this to us for the last five, six years, whatever we've known. I I am same like Nishi, like, you know, as soon as I'm quiet or want to be in meditation, the thoughts will come, they will pass. But then I suddenly find that I've blanked out. I've gone to sleep. That's the only time I will stop thinking until I sleep. As I mentioned, it's the aim is not to not think. It's simply to observe your thinking without engaging with it. Just think of it as observing traffic. You're not yeah. trying to stop the traffic. Mm -hmm. To me, it gets boring. So then my brain completely shuts off. Okay. Um, at first, it would be like that. It's been like that since the beginning, since we started. Like, the, the reason why to... you find it is boring is because um, your mind wants to be entertained. All the time, yeah. That is a... Um, we are trained to, you know, need to be entertained. That's part of our training is we want to be entertained. And however, <clears throat> who we are as a spirit or as a soul is we observe. So at first, you know, you will find it boring. After a while, though, if you just persist, after a while, you would, uh, the need to be entertained would start to become less and less so. Mm -hmm. And you would be able to just observe. And um, so at first, yeah, you would you get bored and you would fall asleep and let it be okay. Don't try to make it you know, wrong that, okay, if I sleep, then I'm not doing it right. At first, there's no, no that, you know, the ego likes to be entertained. The ego always wants more. Like even in the quiet part of your meditations, I can stay like maximum two minutes, like trying first. to... We just keep first, everything out. And at then first, I've fallen asleep. <laughs> and then suddenly it's the first, end of this meeting. It's been a long, long time now. Yeah. I so, haven't been able to sit through anybody's meditation like completely. It could be a lot of reasons. It could be that um, your body uh, needs to rest. Like if you are Can not. Eight hours enough. of sleep, yeah. I get eight hours of sleep and I'll still be drowsy as soon as I sit down in one place. Mm -hmm. Well, you think that you I only know. allow your body eight hours of sleep? If I ever do. <laughs> I <laughs> generally, I don't really function on three or two, five. Yeah, it's it's Okay. It's I, very rare. I'm saying, letting you even know that. Days. Yeah. At first, this I remember when I first go to um, meditation, other people's meditation is yeah, I would fall asleep, not all the time, but a lot of the times. And yeah, however, um, it gets better. <sighs> so don't make don't make it wrong that okay if I fall asleep, then, you know, something is wrong, you know, well, let it be okay. Yeah, yeah I'm okay with it, like, but uh, then I miss out afterwards, even, because mm -hmm. when I fall asleep, it can be like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you know, first, and that will refresh me for some time, uh, mm -hmm. like, if I 
uh, don't sleep well, if I can get a 10 minutes, just five minutes by a time, mm -hmm. I'm refreshed completely. Yeah, and that's okay. So at first, let it be okay. Mm -hmm. so. uh, for Thank me, you. it helps me when I count back, like from 50, I count back to one. It helps me a lot. Then I it's uh, I don't think, and I just uh, kind of focus of, of counting back. And then slowly, slowly, it takes me to this stage that I, I am looking for for meditation, like I don't think anything else then. Mm -hmm. so okay. To, to share if it helps anybody else. Yeah, that's a good point. Try that also. Maybe. I've tried that too, and I will still lose the count and go off. <laughs> oh, okay. I've tried that too, yes. Okay, oh. that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is fine. Mm -hmm. okay. I, just, I just simply say it didn't meant to be whatever you got at that moment that's what you your body can handle and that's what you got just enjoy that so now we can go with the healing I guess <laughs> okay so that's the that's okay that's one way of processing emotions and and, and there's more to come not done yet Great. I know. I know. That's why <laughs> I uh, I have prepared for other things that you can do. That does not work with you. Okay. So the next thing is um, is to do the time travel process. So time okay. travel process. Um, so let me just uh, go through what the time travel process is. It is really, really a way to um, to use this process to look for a way in to shift a pattern. So what I would recommend uh, to do the time travel process is uh, first thing is to um, you know set aside some time. It could be it could be 10, 20 minutes that you just set set a time set aside some time for you to you know let's say work on sadness, for example, to work on sadness. 20 minutes you can you can just set an alarm for yourself and um, do some you know meditation, just do some breathing to calm yourself down. And then call in helpers. So, who are the helpers? It's um, I mean by you know it could be Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, or any other ascended masters that really um that you particularly like or resonate with. So that's what I mean by call in helpers. And if you if you um, are open to it is to actually just call on your highest vibration self you know, that's beyond space time so connect with the highest vibration person, version of yourself so calm your mind down call in helpers and then um, what you do is you set the intention that you want to look for the origin and then opening to shift this emotional pattern okay set that intention and when you set the intention then you can start by you know okay so what's my age or current age right now so for example for me it's 64 so then i would start at current age 64 so i would travel back in time let's say i want to deal with with um sadness i would travel back in time so from 64, I usually go, you know, five or 10 years at a time. So I just look from between 60 and 64. Do I feel that there is an opening or is there an origin of that sadness? Nothing there. So, okay. Then from 50 to 60, just go back in time. So 
the best way to do this is not, is don't think, is to feel, is to feel. So usually what I do is um, I'm more of a kinesthetic person. So I would just imagine that, you know, this is, so now we're dealing with between 50 and 60. So I would just, you know, so this is the, 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 the space that I have between 50 and 60. So I'm just going to move my hand and see if there's any opening. And there's nothing that is open. So, okay, go even further back between 40 and 50 then. Then I will start to move. Okay, there seems to be something there. So there is an opening there. There's something there. So it's around 40, 49. And then, okay, around 43, there's another one. It's, there is an opening, but it's not, I'm looking for the best, okay? So I feel that there is something there, but it's not a deep opening. So I just note it down, okay? So now, now I'm going from 30 to 40, and I would just feel, okay, 37, there's an opening. It's actually, this opening is a little deeper. Do you find? Okay, great. So 37 is where there is an opening to the pattern. So what happens when I feel that there's an opening? So I would just go into it. Do I know what happened when I was at 37 years old? No idea. I have no recollection anymore. I may be able to look for it, but because it is not about knowing. It's about actually feeling it and trusting. So I'm just going to go in there and just observe with my consciousness. So allow your consciousness to just take over and just go into that opening. Opening to that pattern. And then you can actually, or at least I can feel it because I'm, I'm not just you know, doing this as a demo. I'm actually, it's for real. And I can feel things shifting there. And then that is how I can do it. And another way, and um, one more thing I can add to it is I actually want to <clears throat> show you guys a, a tool that I have. Um, okay, what is that? Okay, so this is a, a module. The module is called Help. And this module is something that I got from the the classes that I've been taking. This is for helping with emotional patterns. So just, so this, this picture is actually, or this pattern, this, this um, wheel is actually um, encoded with um, it's encoded and it will kind of help you shift your energy pattern just by looking at this. And if you get a sense that, oh, okay, where in my body would this pattern um, make the, the most benefit? For me, just ask the question and um, and wherever in your body that you actually feel seems to want this pattern to come in, then just put it there. And if in doubt, just put it in your heart. Okay, so that is... I'm sorry, I... I didn't get it. What we do with this one? 
you're talking about this module? Yeah. Okay. So you just look at it. Okay. Okay, so everybody just look at this and feel what comes up for you. Because this module has um, directions being encoded in it. And the directions is to shift emotional patterns. So anybody come up with anything with this? It's kind of calming and soothing. Okay, good. I have some feeling in my heart, something, but not calming. It's <laughs> kind of worrying in my heart when I look at it. I feel a little bit of energy. What was that again, Trin? She has some kind of energy. Yeah, it, the... it definitely does. I feel it in my power center. Oh, okay. Oh. It, it rotates. <laughs> yeah, I feel like like it balanced a bit. I was thinking at my emotion and it it rotated and I felt a bit of balance sing. Mm -hmm. That that emotion. Yeah. It does it, it does it gives you what you need in order to um, shift your patterns. So it will be a little different depending on each person. It seems simple. <laughs> it's quite intricate. I keep looking for all the different patterns in it. <laughs> okay. So, um, how do you feel when when you see? I feel it in my heart. I feel it, you know, kind of opening it. That's how I feel it. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of pulsing in the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to circle back on um, so the time travel process. Any question about that? I do. I have a question. <laughs> okay, cool. Let me just so. Um, questions? So you said, so you choose the time um, frame and from 50 to 60, from uh, 40 to 50, and then you find the opening, right? Yeah. And then you said, go into it. 
and absorb this consciousness. Mm -hmm. Then you said open the pattern. Yeah. And um, feel in your body <coughs> where you have it. Okay. And how you release it. It's supposed to be released by itself. Okay. So there are actually two ways to release it. One is when you observe it with your consciousness. Your consciousness take over and shift the pattern. That's one, the first one. The other one is to use the help module, which is this one here. This one, because within this module, this disk module, there is already an encoding within it to help you release and shift the pattern. Oh, so when you went back and you find the opening, you have to look at this module, correct? You don't have to. You can just use your consciousness. However, you can also... You can also use this. This is an extra tool to assist you. Can we print it and put it in front of us? Yep, we can. Yeah, Could can you please color? share that? Yeah, thank you. Yep. Do you need the colors too? You don't have to print it. You can just look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but if you want to print it, that's up to you. But mm -hmm. yeah. you won't get the colors right, yeah. Um, the printing, you know, it, it really depends the, on the printer. It may not be, you know, it may not look exactly like this, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. You're gonna send it to us, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's the idea. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do you, do you have it on your computer or do you have a prop in, in your hand, physical? It is in my computer. Oh, it's okay. A, it's a file in my computer. Oh, okay, okay. thanks. A JPEG file. Oh, okay. I, I thought it's like how we have Shifu's, uh, that, uh, the healing coasters, uh, probably that's how I thought that's you exactly have. Exactly what this has. You know, because oh. Sifu's the coaster has uh -huh. an encoding in it. So it it just, you know, once you, you put your, you know, my, my cup of water is on the coaster. So, uh -huh. you know, you don't have to think about it. The coast, once you put it on the coaster, there is, the coaster does the work. Yes, That's yes. The same, very similar with this module. Okay, thanks already coding in it all you have to do is just look at it and mm -hmm. you know put it in your energy field and um usually like, if you don't know where to put it just put it in your heart but if something comes to you and say oh i should put it in my stomach or my power center and put it mm -hmm. there so that's what the module does it's already mm -hmm. encoded You guys know how to do time traveling technique now? I need a lot of practice. I the way Can you do it, it with us? Can we do it together? Okay, hang mm -hmm. on. How to how do you def uh, what's the definition for opening? Okay, so um I need a volunteer. Me, me, me. Okay, sure. And me. Okay, let me do Nishi first. So, oh, yeah, because I, I have a plaster all over the place. <laughs> so, Nishi, what, what, which, what do you want to, what emotion you want to release today? 
what's what's your intention? Okay, I see how hard it is for me to pick what kind of issue I have, really. Uh, okay, the sadness, because I don't know. Like I said, we, we discussed before. I don't even remember when I even cried. So, okay. <laughs> because... so we can do it with career, with finance, with romance, you know. No, romance, I don't really need it. I love myself. So <laughs> Let, let's do the, the uh, finance. How is that? Okay, sure. Okay, let's set the intention that we, we want to shift a pattern for finance for Nishi. So that's the intention. Okay, we want okay. to find the find a an opening, the origin or an opening to shift Nishi's financial pattern. So that is the intention. So let's now just invite in helpers. I always like to invite in um, Archangel Shamayel. That's the Archangel of Love. <clears throat> so I also um, actually want to invite in Archangel Michael. So who else wants to come in? Who wants to? So is there any particular helpers, you know, spiritual helpers you want to invite in, Nishi? Whoever wants to come and help. Oh, That's not whomever. <laughs> doesn't That's matter. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Okay, my highest self, I don't know. <laughs> okay, good. So let's invite in the highest vibration self of Nishi that is beyond space-time. Let's invite that in to assist with this process. Okay, good. So current age, Nishi? I'm 58. Okay, so let's check from 58 to 50. Okay, something around 52, 53. That is not deep enough. Okay, so now let's go check 40 to 50. Nope, I don't find an opening there. Okay, 30 to 40. That's something there at around 38, 39. But it's not a very deep opening. Something around 31. There's an opening. It's deeper, but I think we can find a better one. Okay, between 20 and 30. No opening. Okay. Between 10 and 20. This one at around 18 or so. Not a very big opening though. It's 15. It's a good opening. So let's move in there. So let's um, bring up the let's bring this up.
How's it going, Nishi? It's. I think yeah. something is happening, but I don't know what. But I feel the vibration. That's all I can say. Okay. Yeah. You know, don't no need to understand it. Just. Okay. Just allow it to happen. Yeah, that's a big shift there. And your financial pattern feels different. Okay. What do you think? I, love, I always think I'm a millionaire, okay, a billionaire. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good way to think of it. Mm -hmm. So I feel it's softer. Like if, when it first started, when we first mm -hmm. started, I feel so closed off. Like it feels hard. Okay. But now it, I, it feels much more like, like there's a lot more possibility. Thank you. That's what it feels like. And if you um, win the lottery this weekend, <laughs> I want 5%, okay? <laughs> well, I'll give you 10%, don't worry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, cool. But, you know, so, the, the, so you guys, um, did you get the, the process, though? The process, the question is, when you move your hand you feel uh, what do you feel trying to feel do your hands have some kind of uh, resistance so okay so um i am a kinesthetic person meaning i like i feel things so that's uh -huh. what i'm so so what I'm like, what I'm doing in the background is, I imagine the that there is, you know, Mishi's timeline or whomever it is that you're working with could be yourself. The timeline uh -huh. there, there's a timeline there. Uh -huh. You're just feeling for something that is different, that feels different. Uh -huh. Okay. Like, so what I'm feeling for is really and like somewhere that feels like. I can push in, meaning that there is an opening for me to go in. So, so okay. that's because I that's am the a, a kinesthetic that's what person. You mean. Yeah, that's, that's what you mean, opening. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm a, a kinesthetic so. person, so that is the way I would do it. For some people, they are more visual than what... I would suggest you do is actually imagine that there is so so imagination is using your imagination that yes there is just let's say between 50 and 60 for example imagine that you know you can see your own timeline that there is this one line and you're just looking at where in within this line does it look like there is a space for you to go in to 
shift because you set up the you set it up so that you're looking for an opening to shift the pattern. So mm -hmm. you set up that intention. So then your unconscious mind will give you that. So, so that 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 opening you are seeing, looking and feeling, it's not that uh, I'm losing the energy in there, like how oh they say oh your aura has like the the aura has hole. That means I'm losing my energy. Is it that or is so it opening? Thing, you're thinking, so don't okay. think. Okay. So you are setting up with the your own energy field you're setting up that um relationship is that i want to shift this pattern financial pattern or whatever pattern i want to shift this so show me how to do it okay so um so, so don't try to think oh it's because the aura whatever no that's thinking too much so you are going out to trust your unconscious mind to give you something to work with. Okay. Every, everybody's my witness, so Winnie's getting 10%, okay? Winnie, <laughs> um, so does that, does that age matter where it stops, like, or where the opening is? Is that something mm -hmm. that something happened in that age or that is affecting us today? Usually it is. Usually it is. So However, that's what I was trying to the find person out. may or may not remember. Like I, I think, I think I was, I, I got thirty six or thirty eight. There's an opening mm -hmm. for the sadness. Mm -hmm. So I don't remember right now what happened at that age. But I, but I trust. That if that's what I get, then that's what I would need to do. Because I was following with Nishi, and for me, I was doing the sadness, and that was a, something did happen at that stage in my life. Okay, cool. So I'm glad it worked for you too. <laughs> but so. that is the that is that is the um that is the thing with working with energy is that you know yes i worked on nishi but that does not mean only nishi gets that benefit everyone yeah. else if you have a similar pattern you will benefit from it as well and when i looked at the wheel at first my breath started very fast like you know and then slowly it calmed down mm -hmm. but that's the only difference i realized I don't know if it's gone or. Okay. Well, you know what? <clears throat> you can. So the only thing you can. Um, is next time you. You mentioned that you're working with sadness. So next time when you are working. On sadness again. See if you feel a difference. Hmm. Okay. Okay. When you can we do it for the person who is not with us, like for kid, for our kids, or someone that is not present? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> I do it for people all the time. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It works better if you um. So. You have to have some ways of tuning into that person. So mm -hmm. you guys are here, so I can see you. That is not an issue. Mm -hmm. If you, if it's somebody far away, um, at least have a picture of them. Or have their name and an address so that you can kind of you know, pinpoint which energy that you're focusing on. Okay. Okay. So you have it has because you if you are um you're working with energy so energy has a signature you have to have something to identify 
the 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 energy signature of the person that you want to work with to help her or him helping the other intention is to helping the other person right yep and they don't have to look at the wheel i hope so i hope it is to you they don't have to look at it yeah, when you're you doing it on their behalf because when you are doing it you are doing it for yourself as well so you're doing it on their behalf so set the intention that you're doing it on their behalf so they don't have to look at the wheel you look at it and it's going to work for them we can only imagine the wheel right can you can we imagine it in it doesn't have to be in front of us but we remember it right does it work that way um i would suggest to because the wheel is new to you now is to mm -hmm. spend some time and look at it because i'm going to send this to you guys so okay. spend some time look at it get familiar with it once you are familiar with it you can always call it up and oh. the name of the module is help so oh. so when you so form a relationship with this module once you have that relationship, then you can call on it, even when it's not in front of you. Okay. Okay? So there is some homework. <laughs> yeah. Good. Can we just use the help without having to worry about the timeline when something happened? It will still work. Um, however, still work. the more specific you are, the better it will work. So with with this practice, we can enhance anything, right? Yep, you can enhance anything. Mm -hmm. And you're saying the numbers backwards or forwards as you go? in between 10 um i don't so i just give it a uh, 10 years yeah. 10 years like between 40 and 50 and i just you know i'm just just scanning so. i'm just scanning it so it's that's for me that's um that's the best way i find that that's the best way for me to do because if i I don't want to think. I want to actually just get the information. Right. Because if you think, it actually um, is less effective. When you think, isn't it picking up from your subconscious then? Because you remember your mind is always trying to interfere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so don't think. So for me, just using my hand to feel it, that that kind of bypasses um, the mind. So I, I think uh, like for a person like me, especially I'm talking about myself, if I do it by myself, for me, my mind will be like 10 times involved. I know that. So if I'm if I'm doing it for somebody else, I know that I will be more tuned to look because my mind is not going to be with with not thinking because I will be totally relying on the feeling. That's what I think. Okay. Well, you know what? There's no one right way to do it. It's just, you know, work out what's best for you with the intention of, um, you know, trying to bypass thinking. Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, um, Tatiana, you still up for volunteering? I just want to do one more for um, so you guys kind of understand how to do it. I also want to do financial. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Win, is gonna get rich today, yeah, okay? Gonna rich. <laughs> <laughs> gonna rich. Then you will be rich. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are funny. <laughs> okay, so um, again, set the intention that we are, we want to find out um, an, an opening, an origin, an opening, or an opening to shift Tatiana's financial patterns to support her the best way possible. Okay, so. Um, helpers, who needs to come in? Let me think. Definitely Archangel Shamayel, Angel of Love. Raphael. Okay. And Archangel Raphael as well. Archangel Zetkiel is what came up for me. Archangel Zetkiel. Okay. Welcome in, Archangel Zetkiel. Trisortium is another group of um, angelic beings that came to my mind. Trisortium, okay, thank you very much. Okay, so your age now, Tatiana? 62. Okay, 62. Okay, so... 62 to 60, no opening. Okay. 50 to 60, let's see. Well, 51, 52 around there, there's an opening, but not a big opening. Okay, 40 to 50. No opening, 30, 40. Not really much. 20 to 30. No opening, 10 to 20. No opening. Okay, um, 1 to 10. Okay, four years old, there's an opening. Okay, let's go in then. Let's go into that opening. This is deep. How are you doing, Katiana? 
when I just start to look at it, I was shaking, so some energy moving. Mm -hmm. It's still shifting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is a, this is um a big pattern. As I've mentioned before, it's not just for one person, it's for everyone that has something similar. How's it going? I think it's still shifting. Mm -hmm. I think it is easing off now. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's a deep pattern. It's interesting when you did Nishi, I I felt something at my 24 as well. <laughs> and at four, oh my God. And my childhood was something. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I have a question. Do we have to go back and do it again or it's done? Um. Okay, so... <clears throat> Each time you shift a pattern, it will shift to the extent that um, it can shift at that moment. So you have to determine whether that shift is good enough for you. So, you know, next week or so, just notice how you feel about your your finance. If <laughs> you feel it's absolutely hunky-dory, then it's good. But if you find, okay, you know what? It can be better. Then do it again. Do it again and then give it some time to breathe and shift mm -hmm. some more. And then if you're still not satisfied with it, then do it again. Okay. Okay, so do it until you are happy with the results because each time you shift it a bit. That's it. I'm putting you on my speed dial. Don't put me on speed dial. You guys can do it yourself. 
You guys can do it yourself. I give I even give you the module. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Just joking. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. I feel the shift, you know. I feel it it was like shaking me. Okay. I, feel thank you. Well, I feel some energy moving. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. That's great. <laughs>